A while ago, I was going through this op amp kit here and comparing uh, different ones and testing them out. I made a number of videos too on a number of these, but the uh, LF351, I made a couple of mistakes and I'm pretty sure I fried them. I put them in these little baggies because I pretty sure I fried them and then also one of these I only have one of these I think I fried that too I'm not sure but uh, any case what happened was they really aren't all that sensitive but I was testing out op amps and I'm pretty sure I had a dual op amp before uh, two of these components and uh, maybe I fried one and then tried replacing it with the other one right away before I realized my mistake but the power pin was not where it needed to be for this op amp so I think I powered the wrong pin and it's probably more sensitive if you power the wrong pin and you don't have the right two pins powered and uh, they may try to force electricity the way it's not supposed to but in any case here we have a brand new one I ordered 10 of these they're about four dollars so not too expensive but in any case it's not really made for the setup we have here I'm using a single 5 volt power supply and uh, it does go to the negative rail but we're not going to see that with the LEDs but you can see a definite uh, voltage switch right there high and low so what we're going to do is I uh, turn the uh, power off and I'm going to swap it out now for one of my fried ones so I'll put that there make sure I remember that is not the same one and there's a little divot to the top up there or the the divot is the top I should say so negative power supply is right there the output is two up and this is a pretty standard layout for uh, this type of op amp and so now I uh, turn it on and interestingly enough we have both LEDs on right now and uh, so yeah I have one of these LEDs going to the positive rail and then to the output and then the other one coming from the negative rail to the output so short lead cathode is here long lead anode is up there for this one the short lead the cathode is down the long lead the anode is to the resistor goes to the negative rail and uh, let's let's change the input this is just a comparator circuit but you can see the input is holding steady right there it looks like at uh, two and a half volts the halfway point so I don't know why it is getting that but that's what it's getting and as you can see it's not operating like the new one and it's not operating like an op amp should operate so let's turn the power off and now so this is one that I labeled fried and it's pretty clear there that that one's fried it's not behaving like an op amp and it's not behaving like the new one so divot up there and uh, so I'll put the divot upwards and then plug it into the uh, same spot turn the power on and we have the same thing right there so I'm pretty sure I yanked it out of the spot and I think I did most of the rewiring but still had the uh, power pin in the uh, wrong spot and maybe a uh, who knows but uh, there you can see it's not operating properly right there at all and we will leave the power on and insert the uh, new one so I have 10 of these now I paid four dollars for 10 of them so they're not that expensive these particular ones and that goes down to the uh, negative rail there second pin up is the uh, output right there and then the power supply third one up in there now you can see it is operating as a comparator again I'm pretty sure this is intended for uh, it's actually not looking too bad right there but uh, that one is not uh, fully off so let's remove the LEDs and see the waveform that we're supposed to get so again it's still not going up to the 5 volts so I'm looking for rail to rail op amps I'm not sure if I can't remember if I found one or not uh, I kind of moved on from op amps but uh, you can see we definitely can get to the negative rail right there but we cannot get all the way up to five volts so you can count the squares one two three and then a little more than three and a half so four and then five 
up there. So if I go to the power supply, there you can see that jump from there to there. That is five squares up uh, pretty much perfectly. So, in any case, this is the way I'm going to test whether I actually fried an op amp or not. Of course, it should be acting like an op amp. That's uh, pretty clear. But to uh, double check, I'll just buy at least one new one and test it out, make sure it operates like an op amp, and then compare it with the ones that I think are uh, fried. But I only probably fried, I think, three op amps total. It's not easy, but I'm pretty sure it's because I applied power to a uh, pin that inputs, uh, I forget what it's called, the uh, offset. I think I powered into the offset, and that goes into the op amp, and with the imbalance of not having it powered to begin with, and maybe just putting current through the op amp that way, might have fried it, I'm not sure. But in any case, they're pretty resilient. This is pretty rare, but uh, be careful when you're wiring it, especially if you're swapping one type of op amp for the other. Make sure you go through every single pin and check it. But again, they're not terribly expensive. These are about 40 cents each, so so uh, no big loss. But in any case, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.